Hello friends, this video on oscillations part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched part 1, 2 and 3 before going ahead with part 4. So, till now we saw that displacement can be represented by a periodic function in the form of f of t is equal to a cos omega t. Right? Now, we used a cosine function because it is a function which is periodic with time. So, similarly, we can also represent displacement in the form of a sine function because both sine and cosine functions are periodic functions which continuously vary with time. Now, not only in the form of a sine function or a cosine function, displacement can also be expressed in as a combination of sine and cosine function. So here we'll see how. So that means what I told just now would mean that displacement can be represented in this form. A sine omega t plus b cos omega t. So it is a combination of a sine function and a cosine function. But now you would ask me that how will I know that any function which is represented by an equation of this form is equivalent to something which is represented in this form or this form. So in order to convince you what we will do now, we will interpret this equation that is we will interpret this form of expression in the form of sine function. Right. So how will you do, how will we do that? Let us suppose that a is equal to d cos phi where d is some constant and phi is another constant and let us say b is equal to d sin phi. Now if we put these values we can write f of t as d cos phi sin omega t plus d sin phi cos omega t. So we can take d common. So we will have cos phi sin omega t plus sin phi cos omega t. So what is this expression? Sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. We know that sin a cos b plus cos a sin b is nothing but sin a plus b. See, now you will know the usefulness of the formulas which, we, which you study in trigonometry. Therefore, we can write this as d sin omega t plus phi. So therefore, now if you compare this expression with the very first expression, you can see that we successfully wrote this e equation in this form. A sin omega t. So here instead of A, we have D and instead of omega t, we have omega t plus phi. Right? So we, we had successfully able to interpret a combination of sine and cosine functions in the form of a sine function. So this tells us that Displacement can be expressed as a combination of sine and cosine function. But while, inter while doing this interpretation, we have introduced two new terms that is d and phi. So now our aim is to express d in terms of a and b and also phi in terms of a and b. So let us say this is equation number 1. This is equation number 2. So using these two equations, we will find d. So let us first calculate or find out D in terms of A and B. So what we do? Let us square, squaring and adding equations 1 and 2. What do we get? If you square equation 1, you will get A square is equal to D square cos square 5. If you square equation 2, you will get 
d square and on the right hand side you will get d square sin square phi and then you add these two equations so you add them now we know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so using that we can say a square plus b square is equal to d square right so from this we can say that so from here we get d is equal to root over a square plus b square so we have successfully expressed d in terms of a and b now let us look at phi so now we will express phi in terms of a and b so in order to do that what we will do we will divide equation 2 by equation 1 so what will i get we will get d by a is equal to d sin phi divided by d cos phi so this gives phi is this will give tan phi is equal to b by a or phi is equal to tan inverse b by a so this is the value of phi in terms of given a and b so what did we see in this entire topic we saw that a displacement can be represented as a sine function, as a cosine function, as well as as a combination of sine and cosine functions. So what do we conclude from this slide? Any periodic function can be expressed as a superposition of sine and cosine functions of different time periods with suitable coefficients. So what were the suitable coefficients here? Suitable coefficients were nothing but d d and phi were the different values which we used. So using different coefficients we can express any periodic function as a superposition of a sine function and a cosine function. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.